Wow, what a great first two segments with Pastor Dow. Uh, we were talking during the break. I, I just feel his spiritual connection to the truth that when he speaks, you know, I just feel like the Spirit of Jesus coming out inside of me. And uh, I, I've been very, very moved by what he said. But we're going to move into an even more, I think, emotionally gut wrenching topic. I'm an American. I love America. And I hate what's happening to my country. I'm also a Christian, and I love Jesus. And those two entities are moving in totally different directions. Uh, Pastor Dow, I fear that America here, we're, we're listening to Pastor Dow here on the Common Sense Show. I fear America is under God's judgment and that we are in a great deal of difficulty. Would you please comment on that? Uh, yes, sir. No doubt. I, I, I agree with you One thousand percent and plus some anytime you have a country that actually starts off by actually referring to the scriptures and keeping up the commandments and and making it more than anything it's law in the land at least not secularly uh, but it is amongst the christians and the israelites in this land and then all of a sudden because we have sitting back and we have watched this country literally spiritually hijacked we have watched the gay agenda get passed by the Supreme Court of this land. We have um, gender-neutral bathrooms. Um, we are murdering babies when the commandment clearly says, thou shalt not murder or thou shalt not kill. Um, we have fallen away. And there is, my, in my opinion, there's only one way to get back from this, from it falling away, is repent, pay attention to what the apostle said when he said, save yourself from his untoward generation, the apostles also told us to come out of her, my people. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the master, and touch not the unclean thing. Then he would receive you, keep the commandments, and live. Woe unto man that trusts in man. So we have to get back to the book. We have to really truly get back to the book lest we be swallowed up. Because if you notice, we see all this Sin, all this iniquity and all this transgression right in front of us being flaunted on the news media, uh, in the radio broadcast, on the Internet. I mean, it is out there in the open. And now we have gotten to the point, us as believers, to where we're totally desensitized to the work of the enemy now, to where we actually just tolerate. We don't even have the point of conviction in us anymore that we actually abhor sin. We actually abhor sin. The solution is already in the book. But until we actually start doing what the Word says and not hearing it but become doers, we will never, ever, ever receive the protection and the blessing of the Most High or the Almighty like we should. Pastor, it says the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. I think that we have no fear of the Most High anymore in this country. We have it, – it's, it's something that we, we just – I think that's one of the keys is we need to fear the Most High. There's no, there's no fear. There's no fear at all, Pastor. Do you see that? Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, For let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Why? Because this is the whole duty of man. Well, look at our secular government. Look at the secular world uh, concerning us right now. What well, the first thing you start doing, take the commandments out of school, which I actually be the commandments should be actually taught at home. And again, the fear of Yah, it is. It's the beginning of wisdom. But the blueprint has already been laid out by the apostles. When you go and look and see what the apostle Paul said to the church of Corinth, he said, come out of her, my people. Come out from among them. Over and over and over again in his writings. And we're not paying attention to what he's saying. And the reason why we have to come out is because we need to be able to come out to go in in order to discern what's going on because if we continue to soak ourselves and immerse ourselves and rub elbows every single day with these people who have no fear of him whatsoever at all, it won't be too long before we start relaxing our lifestyle. We'll start relaxing everything about us, and then the things that used to be an abomination, we'll start tolerating and accepting. So now we've gotten to the point where we can't even discern good from evil, evil from good, right from wrong. And the reason being is because we have literally – lost our voice and lost our conviction, we have become afraid because of being politically correct to actually speak the truth and say the truth when necessary. We have, we have fear of rejection. We have fear of, of losing family or losing friends rather than actually remembering the fear of God. But first and foremost, 
We need to keep it in the front of our minds. Even we have to save our own self is to fear him and keep his commandments. Because without keeping his commandments and without, there's no way you can show that you love him and there's no way you can enter in. America has actually shown that the God of this country is not Elohim, Almighty Yahweh himself, the Yohei Vahe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But um, America has actually shown that the God of this country is Satan, the USA, under Satan's authority. You have no further to look than the architect, the secret societies, to see exactly what's culturally being defined as righteous and unrighteous, what is happening right in front of our very eyes, how lewdness, lasciviousness, iniquity is ruining this whole fabric of this country. We are actually following in the same exact footsteps as ancient Rome. My goodness. I, I totally agree with everything you just said. So how do we get back in God's good graces? The way we get back in y'all's good graces, number one, repent. And we have to repent. In order to repent, we have to be willing to turn from the way which is wicked. Our problem today is we don't know what's wicked. We, we haven't been able to define what wicked is, and it's called this to fall upon us. I'll give you an example. We enter into a time in the season of the year where the majority of the people who say that they fear God and say that they love him, contrary to the Bible, is getting ready to go out and celebrate some pagan holiday called Christmas. They're getting ready to actually slap him in the face. It is utterly amazing to me because when we read about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he put his people into slavery, the Babylonian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, the Medes and Persian captivity, the Greek ca captivity, the Roman captivity. I can go on and on and on. The United States of America captivity or all this captivity we're dealing with now, but it's amazing. Now we have this new belief and this new religion that has come up on the scene and tells us you don't have to keep his commandments because we're under grace. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping um, holy days anymore because they're done away with. He's replaced them with holidays. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. It goes on and on and on. I'm quoting Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. You can read it for yourself. And now we live in a country that has said that the Sabbath is no longer binding, is done away with, and we replaced it with Sunday. How can God bless a nation that actually spurns and rejects his word and changes it to suit their lifestyle? It, it just... There's no way he's going to be able to bless disobedience. So we want to be able to turn this tide only for ourselves. It won't happen as a nation. America is destined to burn, and people need to get that through their thick heads. It is destined to burn. We have gone too far into sin and too far in iniquity, and I'm not even so sure that the majority of these people in this country can even repent. It's only going to be a few. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They do, was doing the same thing in those days as we're doing today, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, reveling, and, and just living righteous living. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So what we better do is get back, and I'm talking to all of us that are believers, to what the book says, and we better throw away all these private interpretations or these interpretations of men that have led us astray and, and actually made us cursed as a people and as a nation rather than blessed because we have sanctioned disobedience. Wow, Pastor, I tell you, that's powerful stuff. You know, and I, it's, it's so interesting that you had this, and we may have to carry this over to the next segment. I had this very conversation with my wife this morning over breakfast about what you're speaking of. And it was almost identical to what you just said, not not with such eloquence, but in my own way with her. And you know, it's it's I could see her disbelief, almost like, yeah, but everybody does that. It's but every I say I know, but everybody has been deceived, don't you see? I said, think about it. You see that the, the enemy has has infiltrated every single organization that you can possibly name. Don't you think he would infiltrate the church? Of course, more than anything, and adulterate the message, 
and 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 take people's eyes off what they really should be doing and 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 of course now the modern gospel is what you're talking about the modern gospel is is nowhere near as holy as God wants us to be i mean it's 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 so far removed pastor you're right i'm not sure if some of us can repent it may be too late well I, you know jim as i hear your words and i and believe me i am very sympathetic i have empathy towards uh, your wife's thoughts and uh, about you know everybody but you know the Mossad spoke to us very clearly um and, and it's really it was very clear even in the days of noah noah preached 120 years and only got eight people only eight people were saved peter asked jesus are there a few to be saved and you know how jesus responded to him he said you strive to enter in at the straight gate for many shall seek to enter and not be able. Yah, the creator of the universe, he chose Israel, not because they were great among the nations, but because they are least. And I think that what we need to do is rather than putting our eyes and keeping our eyes on what the majority of the people are doing and practicing this cattle mentality to where whichever way that the herd goes is what we're going, we better start actually going the opposite way. That's what we better start doing. We better seek for the old path, seek for that way, and then when we find it, walk in it and forget the majority because the majority has never, ever been right in the eyes of God. No, and I agree, Pastor. we got about 30 seconds left here in this segment, and we can certainly carry this over into the next segment. Uh, no, but I, I think what I think more or less, my wife certainly believes uh, the, what we're talking about. It's just amazing that there's so, I think it was amazing to her that so many people can be fooled and in the millions and hundreds of millions. I mean, mostly everybody. And, and I think it's just incredible sometimes, Pastor, how the enemy to me has got his hands in every single solitary institution and organization you can possibly imagine. But the good thing is, is uh, our father certainly has his men on the scene too. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be back after these messages here on the Common Sense Show. I'm James White along with my colleague and friend, Dave Hodges. And we'll be back after these short messages.